Okay, let's start creating an Angular application. First, create an empty directory and open the directory in Visual Studio Code. You can really create this directory in any location. Open Visual Studio Code, go to File, Open, and then browse to that directory and click Open. By doing that, you're basically opening the directory in Visual Studio Code. If you've just created the directory, that's obviously going to be empty, so you're not going to see any files there. But as you start adding files into that directory, you're going to see them over here. All right, that's the first step. Second step, open your browser and go to angularjs.org. Like I mentioned before, this is the official website for Angular 1.x, and this is what we're going to be using. So go to angularjs.org, and you need to download the Angular script. You can actually do this in a couple of different ways. So here you see you have an option of downloading AngularJS 1 or trying the new Angular 2. You're going to be doing this, right? So click on this button, and it's going to give you a bunch of different options for using AngularJS. Right now, the latest stable version is 1.5.x, 1.5.8 specifically. You can actually link it to the CDN, so they have actually hosted the uh, AngularJS script in the CDN at ajax.googleapis.com. You can actually link it directly, but what we're going to be using is a downloaded version. So choose 1.5.x, which is the stable version. Under build, choose uncompressed. So you have an option of choosing a minified script file or a zipped script file. Minified is basically, uh, you know, uglifying the script in order to make it really, really small. It removes spaces, it removes unnecessary indentation, comments, and all that stuff. We would like our Angular script to be readable, at least for development purposes. So we're going to choose uncompressed. And then click on download. And when you're asked for the location of the download, choose the location that you create it with the new directory that you have opened over here, right? In Visual Studio Code. So you're gonna add the script, download it into this directory. So when you click on download and choose that directory, the script needs to show up over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I have the script downloaded. I'm gonna open this in Finder or Windows Explorer if you're using Windows and move this script to that directory. So I have my thinking in Angular folder and I have angular.js downloaded and moved into it. So if I open Visual Studio Code now, you will see that that's the file is showing up over here. You can actually click on it and you have the complete AngularJS source code. You can read through this maybe once you're comfortable with a lot of the concepts we're going to be discussing. But at this point of time, we're just going to use it for our HTML. We're not going to be reading this. Now, how do we use this in the HTML? First thing we need to do is to create the HTML. So that's the next step, right? So I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this index.html. That's kind of like the standard convention for uh, a, a root HTML. You can call it anything you want, really. All right, so I have index.html. If I switch to Finder, well, there you go, it's going to show up there. So this view links to this view because we opened that directory. Now I'm going to create a simple HTML over here. I'm going to have an HTML open and close node, and within it, I have a head, open and close, and a body, open and close, and inside the body, let me actually have an H1 here, which says, hello Angular, and I'm gonna save this. Now if I open this in Finder, now I can actually use this, I can actually open this HTML file. If I open this up, uh, it opens up in Google Chrome because I've set that as the default browser for this course. So it opens this location and uh, here is my HTML. And if I were to make a change here, I click refresh and the change gets updated. So this is gonna be the development process, right? We're gonna make changes to the HTML over here in Visual Studio Code and go to Chrome and click refresh and the change is gonna get refreshed in the browser. All right, so this is a simple HTML, not that fun. We need to include Angular. The way to include Angular is by actually linking to that script. You remember I told you that Angular first needs to load in that window. It needs to execute in that window. So this is an executable piece of JavaScript code. Somebody has to execute this. So for the browser to execute it, I'm gonna have to link it. So let me close this and link this thing. So I'm gonna link this in the head for now. I'm gonna talk a little bit about where to link this best. But at this point in time, it's okay if it's in the head. I'm gonna create a script, src equals the location of the script. In this case, it's at the same location. So I'm just gonna give it the name. I'm gonna say angular.js. 
and I'm going to close the script tag. Okay, now let's refresh. Seems like nothing has changed, but if you open the developer tools, uh, I, I did a command alt i, but you can actually open developer tools by going to more tools here and uh, developer tools, and you're going to get this view. And now if you open the network tab, choose all and refresh, there you can see index.html is loaded. The browser sees the script, so it says, okay, let me go ahead and load Angular. It's going to load Angular.js, and that's being loaded in the browser. Of course, we haven't asked Angular to do anything, so you don't really see Angular doing anything. So let's go ahead and make that change. We'll have Angular do something here. So how do you make Angular do something? Now, how do you tell Angular that you need to create an Angular app? Of course, you can write some JavaScript code to do it, but the standard recommended way to instruct Angular that you need to create an Angular app is by using a directive. Yes, Angular follows the concept, the principle that we've just talked about. A lot of things that you do in Angular, you don't write JavaScript code to get the element and have it behave in a certain way. You actually write directives. You just use directives, right? So you have declarative programming. So the best way to tell Angular that you have an Angular app is to declare an Angular app, all right? So the way to declare an Angular app is by using a directive called ng-app. How do you use a directive? You use it by just adding it to an HTML node. So say ng-app. So this, let me actually get rid of this. You just have to say ng-app here. And I have added ng-app to the HTML node, right? The HTML node was just HTML open and close, right? So I have actually added a space here and then said ng-app. So this is a directive. It's an extension of HTML that comes with Angular. And this tells Angular that you want this to be an Angular application. This is declarative programming. Again, somebody has already written the logic in the Angular script over here that says, hey, if there is an ng-app, create an Angular application. So that's what Angular is gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna save this and run this again. All right, this is an Angular application. Uh, it's a bit of a disappointment because it still doesn't do anything. There's nothing changed because while we have declared this to be an Angular app, we haven't used any of the Angular features in order to make this dynamic. So let's do that next. Now, let me actually add this paragraph tag here. It says, good morning. Simple paragraph tag. Refresh this, I see good morning here. But this is not always true, is it? Now, let's say I open this HTML page at night. I don't wanna be told good morning. I want this greeting to be dependent on the time of the day. So what I wanna do is have this be conditional. I wanna say if the time of the day is so much, then show good morning. If not, show something else or whatever, right? But for now, I'm just gonna have a conditional true or false to either show this or hide this. So in order to conditionally show an element in Angular, there is, well, you guessed it, another directive. You can declare an element to be conditional. And Angular is gonna make that conditional depending on whatever condition you have, right? So the way to do that is by using another directive called ng-if. It's similar to ng-app here, right? So that's a built-in directive. You're gonna have to remember this. Just like you have ng-app to declare HTML as an Angular application, you have an ng-if to declare an HTML element as a conditional element, okay? So let me make this a conditional element by marking this as ng-if. Now, just this is not enough. What is this conditional upon? It has to be conditional upon a condition, right? So I'm gonna just say condition equals true. So this is always gonna show up, right? ng-if true. So if this is true, show good morning. So this is really a no-op, it's always gonna show up. So let's verify that. Well, it is gonna show up. So we still don't know if Angular is doing anything yet. So there's one way to know, and that is by changing this to false. If we change this to false, the condition is false. So Angular, if everything is wired up right, should not show this good morning message, All right? So let's save this, refresh. Now the message goes away, now Angular, works, now we have a definite proof. So here's what we did. We have created an Angular application, all right? We did this by doing a bunch of different steps. 
The first step was to add a script to include the Angular script into our HTML. This is required because Angular is a framework. You have to add the framework before you add your application code. So this is the first step, right? You added the framework code. Step two, you declared this page as an Angular application by using a directive called ng-app. By doing this, Angular knows that this is an Angular application. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this in a bit, so just go with me here. The third thing we did to actually see if Angular is doing anything is to have some kind of dynamic functionality. The basic dynamic functionality we chose to try out was a conditional HTML element. This conditional HTML element is declared by using ng-f equals and the condition you wanna use. So depending on this condition, Angular is gonna either leave this element in the DOM or if the condition is false, it's just gonna remove that element from the DOM. So by marking ng if equals false, you're basically asking Angular to remove this all the time. But since it is in the HTML, we finally had Angular do something, right? We gave it some work saying, okay, remove this element. And now if you go to the browser, that element is now gone. So we have, ladies and gentlemen, our first Angular application. In the next video, we're gonna try out a couple of more things to see what Angular can do now that we have a complete Angular application.